I'm 44 years old. I had it. I just became a man. Mm. Reese, like, Crazy. I, I'm living a life thinking I'm a man. I'm no man, bro. Right. I, I can identify with that person or yeah. as I am now. Like, it's hard. It's hard to embrace that reality, y'all. Well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start y'all off. Um, again, I want to thank you guys for hopping on. Uh, Jay started talking about mental health, and I thought it was a great way to steer a podcast episode about mental health in Black men especially. So um, I am calling this uh, the men's roundtable, which means I have to excuse myself. And GP is actually going to run the show. <sighs> Shoe talk is in your hands, GP. I am going to excuse myself. I'm going to go put Ramsey's to bed. Y'all have fun. Uh, I want you guys to be open, transparent. But then again, I don't necessarily feel like I have to say that to y'all. This is just the dynamic of this group. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and peace out. GP, this is all you. And uh, again, I, I thank y'all for, for being a part of, of this show. Yeah, peace out already. Nope. <laughs> peace out, sis. Well, what's going on, guys and girls? You know, I got to do my own intro for my own show on her show so I can feel more natural. But how y'all doing? I know there's no females on this one. It's just the fellas today talking about mental health. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to discuss with y'all. And um, I do have some questions for you guys to find out about your mental health. So I think it's it's important at least um, who wants to go first, maybe tell their story, brief synopsis of how... Uh, I I would say, how did you, how did you come to the breakdown of getting to your mental health issues? Uh, I can go first if if any, unless anybody else wants to pop on first. Um, I my exposure. Um, do I got to introduce myself? My name is JC. Yeah, she she probably uh, would want that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is JC, and I am, uh really passionate about mental health because I don't I think it's something that gets hugely underlooked, especially for men of color. It's it's just one of them things that just gets tossed by the wayside and it's not really really talked about. Um so my my exposure to it was finding out that it was actually a thing was when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Um my father was an alcoholic so early on my mother wanted uh at an early age to have understanding about why things like substance abuse happens and how it affects you mentally and being having some stability to your mental health uh so my exposure to having somebody to talk to other than my mother or a friend uh having that non-bias i don't know how she got to that point of wanting to expose her children to that I think it had to do with the fact that she might have saw like you know that's something that needed to be addressed um for her kids but having that exposure early on was my first experience that how important mental health is and the way it was explained to me was if you have a you know if you have a heart condition or any other problem of the body uh issue of the body the, that does not exclude the neck up um, and having to deal with emotions and how those emotions are tackled is something that really gets, left, especially with men, uh, boys, gets left behind where girls get a little bit more exposure to how to deal with their emotions because they're told how to uh, usually, uh, well, in, in American culture anyway. Um, and boys really aren't. So you've got this this kind of like lapse in what it means to really care about your mental health and, and, mm -hmm. and being able to identify. Um, but anyway, that was my first introduction to what mental health is and why it's important is just getting exposed to it at a, at a young age. Mm. Okay. All right, I'll go. I don't mind. Um, to be honest with you, um, I would say for mental health is just, 
something that is very recent for me, I would say, you know, with um, the death of a bunch of people, friends and family members, um, and just thinking to myself and uh, seeing, seeing, I know this sounds weird, but seeing that dark place, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. actually um, sitting down and visualizing this dark cloud that's around me, just like in the um, the movie, the, the um, get out when he was floating and it was just all black around him. I could, I could visually see that after my mom passed away. Um, when my boy passed away, it was more so me constantly thinking about, yo, damn, what if I was in a car with him? You know, could I have saved him? You know, would we have both died? Um, right. Would I have survived? Would I have saved us? You know, just constantly think about stuff like that. But when my mom's situation, what made it worse for me is I, I couldn't do anything. Um, I literally just sat down and was just listening to um, Hey Mama by Kanye West for hours or um blood on the leaves or um run away just constantly just listening to it over and over and over like people would call me i'm like yo i can't talk uh tv was on i'm a zombie uh so then you know i really i really felt some type of way but i didn't know that was mental health that wasn't a big thing you know what i mean they wasn't telling us um uh, that's mental health that that's just you know something you might go through but then i think it really got to me when um I know this, this, hey, I, whatever, uh, the chiropractor I went to Olympic Russian af, junior athlete, um, looked at me dead in my face and said, yo, your back is messed up. You can't lift heavy weights anymore. I said, okay, I, I, I think about it. Went home, started stretching. Um, I started running. He looked at me again and goes, yo, so what you been doing? I said, I've been running. He was like, uh, I want you to stop that too. I said, so... <laughs> I can't do anything. He said, nah, it's better if you just lay off everything. So right there and then I almost got depressed again. But I think what happened now after my mom and my boy passed away, a mechanism um, kind of like snapped into my brain where right before I get to that dark place, there's like a filler. So I can uh, like a filament. So I can see the dark place coming and it's up to me to solve it, um, solve, solve the issue. So I don't get it. So I don't get behind the wall. So you know, I just, I was just like, yo, I'm sorry, doc. I'm just not going to come to you anymore. My health insurance is paying for this anyway. So I don't have to come see you. So I stopped seeing him. I started running and then, you know, started working out again. And then it just started getting a little bit better where I could be more um, understanding of myself and, and um, being depressed, paying attention to my mental health, making sure that um, I'm in a good place. I have another story too, but I'm gonna let y'all go, Jason and um, Kev go first before I tell the other story. But it's really just for me when it comes to mental health, it's just um, it's paying attention to what's going on before I get before I get to that place where mm. um, I'm just kind of lost in the sauce a little bit. You want to go, so Kev? What was, the, what was what was the question again? I'm sorry. So basically, how did you, I guess, how did you get into finding out about your mental health? So don't, don't, I guess, yeah, don't, Uh, I I guess don't indulge too much, but you know, let us know how you, how you got there. Honestly, to be honest, you, you get, you get over time, you know, Mm -hmm. as society changed and, you know, it's, it was okay to speak about mental health. Mm -hmm. You start to like notice little things, but I think my actual breakthrough and realizing that you know what I'm going through is like more than just something that you could be like toughing up about is Mm -hmm. during COVID when I was in a hospital for like 10 days that shit fucked my whole world up because you're in pure isolation I'm talking about I've been in war zones I've lost my dad young I'm from the inner city in the 80s and 90s so you know what that was like so it's like it wasn't until them 10 days when I was like oh shit I'm fucked up (laughs) yeah there's there's more to this and all that stuff that I've been noticing over the years, I'm talking about like years of stuff, but you never could be like, oh, there's an actual name for this thing. Mm-hmm. I have mental health issues. Not I'm crazy. I mean, we all say, yo, I'm crazy, bro. I'll <laughs> fuck you up. But nah, like, I got mental health issues. You dig? Yeah. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. I'll let Jason rock out. Um, well, my name's Jason Baptiste. Um, proper introduction, I suppose. Um, whoa. man, 
like this topic. This shit heavy. So when did I realize that mental health was a thing? You know, this part of this is um <clears throat> comforting. Another part of it is just like embarrassing. Cause you're I, I was led to live a life that wasn't exactly what it could have been because I was um misinformed mm -hmm. as to what manhood is supposed to be, how it's supposed to be. Right. And a lot of misconceptions, you know, um, you stack that with a lot of traumatic experiences and then you get this thing that you just didn't even know. <laughs> You're looking in a mirror at some, a stranger, you know what I'm saying? You have no clue because you'd like to believe that, um, you know, you're not supposed to express how you feel. You know, all awesome. the like, true. you know, you touch touch point, man. Like, like Kev was saying, grew up in the early eighties and nineties, bro. That joint, the joint different than now, man. Like you, you weren't allowed. Different. You weren't allowed to be a certain way. Like mm -hmm. it was dangerous just going to school. You know what I'm saying? You can't just be telling people where you're from. Casual conversation, yeah. <laughs> like. And you know that that carried on, and and a lot of the other elements <clears throat> of growing up in a Caribbean household, you know, which which I feel needs to be addressed. Also, there's a lot of detrimental social standards in 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 our culture that um, <clears throat> leaves men to to become, for lack of a better word, you know ignorant you mm -hmm. just fine mm -hmm. bro you don't know why you mad you just mad you just mad just mm -hmm. mad at um, the world facts yeah. here i am i'm 44 years old i had it i just became a man mm -hmm. recently like Crazy. i i'm living a life thinking i'm a man i'm no man bro right. I, right. I couldn't identify with that person or yeah. as i am now like is is um it's hard. It's hard to embrace that reality, y'all. Yo, that you just, it's like when you, <laughs> I don't know who here is religious, but I'm not taking shots. But it's like after you get that epiphany, and you've been going to church the whole time, and you're like, yo, <laughs> that up. Yeah. It's like, wait, you love me unconditionally, but if I don't, I burn forever? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yo, I don't make you feel me, right? Like, it's like, yeah. like what's well, yeah. good? And yeah. same thing, mental health. I just didn't yeah. understand why I was doing the things I was doing, mm -hmm. right? Why I was thinking the things I was thinking, why I was feeling the way I was feeling. Mm. Um, you know, therapist after therapist, they put me on drugs, bro. I've been institutionalized. Like, they got all kinds of crazy shit, man. Excuse my language, sorry, but. You know, it's hey, li listen. Um, I I don't think, I guess she could always bleep it out in the edit. So <laughs> feel free, <laughs> feel free to say what you want and how you want. We'll just we'll just edit it later, man. We'll just take care of it la later in the edits. But um, yo, real quick, Renard. First of all, ahead. you didn't let me introduce myself. It's Kevin B, the brand, the one and only. You did get heard. Um, mm -hmm. another thing that I wanted to say also where I started realizing mental health shit is when I became a father for the first time. Yeah, you know I mean, I don't know what it was like to be a fucking father except for what was on TV. Mm -hmm. And it's like that anxiety, panics, and it's like, what am I gonna do next type stuff or whatever? Like you could be financially straight all you want, but it's like there's certain things that finances ain't gonna cover. And you know, you like Jason just said a lot of us just really realize how to be a man anyways. And now you're telling me I got to go raise a man too? <laughs> or those that have daughters, I don't know what people's situations are, but regardless, raising another human, I feel mm -hmm. as though you got to get your mental straight. It ain't just about the finances. That shit's easy. We can do that all day, every day. We hustlers. But like, right. what 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 values are we instilling? What what are we teaching? Like, right, I, tell my I tell my son day in and day out, I love you. 
and I'm going to kiss him and I'm going to hug him and I'm going to show him. I'm trying to raise you emotionally right. You you see what I'm saying? Like shit that whether we didn't get it from our fathers or not because they were there, not there, whatever the case may be, mothers can only do so much. Fathers are a whole different thing, you dig? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you 100%. Yo, you know what's crazy? Y'all hit on so many of the questions I wrote down. (laughs) <laughs> I don't even know which one to get at first, but um, I'm not going to lie to you guys and I'm going to keep preaching this. So I'm going to drop it here, um, but I'm going to drop it for myself uh, later as well. When I, when I bring back selfish plug, I'm, when I bring back galactic vibes, I'm going to have to have y'all on there too. Um, but one of the questions I do want to ask you, do you think being a person of color affects your mental health, especially Jason bringing up, you know, being in a Caribbean household where, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't feel like for me personally that I wasn't told not to express myself or my emotions and feelings, but it was never, no one ever really asked. You know what I mean? I do remember there was a time where um, I came home crying because, yo, we had a tennis match as a team. I won my match. And when I looked at all the other kids, I felt like they wasn't playing that hard. So I came home crying and my mom did come in the room and she talked me through it. So I do remember moments like that, um, but I don't I don't remember any other times. And I really do feel like as a person of color, may, maybe the other races as well, I don't know. But as a person of color, we really get told not to wear um, our hearts on our sleeves a lot. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to say too much, but I do remember working at one of the jobs that I worked at and then, you know, doing everything I was doing. That's what I was told a lot. Like you wear your feelings on your, on your sleeves, you know, it's just a job. Don't take it that seriously, but it's just like, nah, yeah. it is that serious. I'm I'm working with kids of color. You know what I mean? I'm working with kids of other races. I just like Kevin said about um, instilling something inside the, the his son, I wanted to instill something inside these youth. Like, yo, you matter. Like, let's let's start let's start young on how we um, advance ourselves. And I, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I, yo, I, you, they're not your kids, so you can't choke them out. So you gotta be patient <laughs> and you gotta be able to talk to them. But they be they be attacking attacking you to the point where you be like, yo, you lucky you. Ooh, you know what I mean? But it, it it's important. I do feel like um, it's important for people of color to start to 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 start that mental health um, talk with their kids early, you know, and stealing something. But do you guys think that your mental health and maybe mental health issues that you had was affected because you are a person of color? Oh, probably hundred percent. That I don't I don't think there's a I don't think there's any doubt about that, that the, the discrepancy in mental health in different cultures is high. But if you just want to talk about, uh, you know, American culture and the divide in what services are available, what education is available, it's just, it's more of just starting there. When you, I mean, we can get real deep into this mm-hmm. conversation, about like we go way back as to why things are the way they are, but it's like, that's all connected so it's just like if you were if you didn't have access to certain things doesn't matter what it is you're an underserved population that that education about any subject under the sun is going to be given to you on in crumbs so that's fact you know so it's just like this is this of course is going to be way on the bottom you know way at the bottom because we're, we're trying to do other things to survive so fuck all the you know the, the mental health thing mental about health how, how you just feel like, emotionally physically it's like you know you gotta get the job done yeah you gotta get the job done so it's 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 just i feel like you know the more it's like i'm assuming we're all probably around the same age give or take but like our parents and their grandparents probably didn't really look at it unless it was something that actually affected their family and for my family, like, you know, we, there was stuff that affected our family, you know, back in the fifties. So there was, there's little sprinkles of, Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, but they just called it something else. You know, they, you know, they had different names for it. They were institutionalized people um, not knowing what the underlying cause was for something because mental health is a, is a, is a wide um, 
you know, it can go just from your, your mental well, wellness, mental well-being. Do you take time for yourself? If you don't take time for yourself, then of course you like ready to like, you know, lash out th- th- that type of stuff where you're, yeah. you're constantly, you know, depending on your lifestyle, you're going, 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 or you're, you're, you got too much going on or you, you're not really paying attention to you. Um, or you were told, you know, well, this is how a man's supposed to be. And this is how boys are supposed to think and feel and all that kind of stuff. And so you have to like, feel like you have got to repress all that stuff. So it's just like, on top of being a person of color, that's just, that's a lot to unpack. So this is like, I feel like this might be a, you know, episode one <laughs> on this joint right here. So, but yeah, I, I feel like it, it, the more exposure, you know, if, especially if you got kids or you're thinking about having kids, the more exposure and the more you educate yourself about mental health and, and well-being and, and have more conversations like this, and talk to young people about it um there's there's but the problem is right now is there's such a lack of people in that field who are of color Mm -hmm. for you to feel comfortable to even talk to it's just it's it's big deal so it's just like i feel like that is something that also needs to be identified as a problem like it's it's a problem like even if even to to identify what the issue is maybe i don't know how to Maybe I don't have the skills to talk, mm-hmm. maybe, you know, or talk about my feelings or talk about, about about anything in general. Maybe I just don't have those skills to say um, or even acknowledge that I even have an issue. Like ha- if the behavior is so ingrained that you don't even think it's something wrong. Yo, that's that's, that's like. It. You don't even like this dude, you know, it's like, you know, like this dude over here, you know, just anybody, this dude over here doesn't even know he has a problem. And, but he's treating people this way. He's, you know, talking this way, you know, and saying stuff to people that's either putting them down or, or whatever the case is, or, or however, whatever the behavior is, however it's exhibiting itself in being, you know, dysfunctional. Maybe you don't even know you're being dysfunctional, you know, those type of behaviors. It's like, if you can't identify what those are, how are you supposed to address it? You in trouble. You know, a yeah. great philosopher once said, what's worse, the pain or the hangover? <laughs> right. Yo. That's, a, <laughs> that's real. Yo, I'm not going to lie to you guys. That Yo, I sat down when I first heard that, and I was just like, well, man, obviously the pain is worse. And then when I really thought about it, I said, no, the hangover is worse because you're constantly going out causing the same problems. Over and over, you drinking to get a hangover, not solving the main problem as to right. why you're drinking. So you go back to more drinking. Right. You just keep going. So that's worse. Yeah. Yeah, mental health could be like, you know, if like if you're if you have so many problems going on, you're just stressed out all the time. You know, that's and tough. like I've had situations where they're like, oh, you know, well, we're going to. We're going to um, you know, give you these pills, you know. That's even worse. You know what I mean? And it's just like, that's, that's, I feel like it's a band aid for like the mm-hmm. actual yep. problem. It's like, if I'm stressed out and you want to give me something that's, that's really not addressing the issue, unless I actually start a conversation about what the issues are and then actually take action on the issues. So, you know, because you could be around somebody who's toxic mm-hmm. and is like, and, or your parents are toxic and you unknowingly take on their, their habits and their behaviors and their thinking and their, their process of, of how they do things, not knowing that they're damaging yourself and, and damaging how you're going to raise your kid or whatever the case is. So it's just like, I feel like it's such a big, so vast subject. For real. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Preach, go on, preach. <laughs> Wait, do you guys want to, um, Get on that as well. Talk about how well I know I mean, Jason. You you got on it a little bit, and Kev, you did because you said your um your community. I think I, th- I think I think I think at the end of the day, it's like uh, I think it comes down to what brother said. Like what you don't know is hard to fix, the, especially when it's already ingrained in you, right? And you know when we was coming up, we was told all the time, "Toughen up, boys, don't cry, man what? up." What do you mean, man up? I'm all eight years old. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you man up. How about that one? You know what I mean? But it's like, it, it, and then you talking about being a black man, raising black boys. 
that that's a whole little a whole other mental health. If you didn't have it before, now you got it again because you know it, it it's it's hard. You know the same rules don't apply for everybody, and yep. it's unfortunate that it got to be that way. But it, it's the realities of life. So like, I look at it like this. I have to have different talks earlier with my son that I never got. Mm-hmm. I had to learn. We had to learn on our own how this works. And then TV and social media started, hold on, baby boy, I'm trying to drop some knowledge here. <laughs> uh, social media taught us, showed us a whole lot of the uglier side of America. You know what I mean? So it's like, now, at, when do we have to start having these talks? The Man. moment they're walking out of our house with us? Like, mm-hmm. before, it's not until teenage, where you out there being bad in the streets and all that stuff. That's when you first start getting into encounters. But now it's like, what, what, what was Tamir? All these other kids, they're barely yeah. teens. Barely yeah. teens, bro. So you're talking about 10, 11 years old, you got to start talking? Yeah. That's crazy. That that That's a whole nother anxiety and stress. That's true. If your, mental ain't, if your mental ain't right already? You in boy, trouble, man. Boy. Man. That, that's why those that are listening, if you don't take anything from this, seek a therapist. <laughs> I'm on my third therapist. My first time going to therapy was for anger management when I thought, you know, I was in the military. I thought it was going to go crazy, but I was normal. But now it's like, oh, I'm not normal. Mm. I wish I had addressed a lot of this other stuff well beforehand. You know what I mean? But I'd rather be late to the party than never show up at all. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Jay. You was about to say something. Yeah, man. I mean, elephant in the room, right? So we we have a we have this situation, this ongoing situation where we are developed in a trauma culture, right? So your social emotional defaults are developed by the same detrimental mental conditioning. Mm. So whatever's happened to our parents, parents comes trickling down via the DNA and their environment, social interactions, right? I even found myself, you know, I'm, 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 I'm strict as hell, was mm. as hell, because I had to really sit back and analyze, what am I doing? It was affecting my 17-year-old son the wrong way. It's causing him to shut down. Mm, okay. Right where I was, I grew up. I grew up with the, you stupid, that what? You ain't know what that is? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, how am I stupid? But you, you grew up being conditioned by it. This is what yeah. I'm trying to say right now. This is a social trauma. You're telling me stupid. Right. Now I'm going to go to school and I don't think I'm stupid. I, other kids of the same culture go to school, but their parents tell them the same thing. So when you in class struggling, they're going to giggle and laugh. Don't yeah. know why they laughing because it's relative they can relate to that yeah right especially you think they're laughing at you but they're laughing at the commonality and just off of that little thing that little situation just imagine the plethora of other dynamics that are existing in that ecosystem for us mm-hmm. now when we talk about it just you know being black listen yo i <laughs> whoever's watching this man i'm gonna tell you something you're not, you're not on this right here. <laughs> that melanin, you, you, yo, you don't understand. You'll never understand. Is and I'm not saying that to be just dis, like dismiss uh, speaking the truth. That. You'll never understand. We wake up in a duplicit state every day because one side of us is navigating this world, right? Like we know what we got to do. The other side of us has to navigate it as we're black. Mm-hmm. And you got to bring them together in the middle, right? Now you now you add the social traumas from society as is, plus the traumas from what your upbringing was, plus everything that came with your parents, shit through the DNA, and you don't even know why you're mad. You're just mad. You you in a black conundrum. It's because now, in your code. And then now you have your other people telling you, oh, yo, don't be a bitch, nigga, yo. Don't be a bitch, nigga, dog. You don't want to do you don't want to do a crime, you a bitch, nigga. 
You you don't want to be <laughs> have sex with a ton of different women. You a bitch nigga, right? You guys, you can relate to this. There's times when you you're even being you know at some point there was shaming you for just trying to be monogamous. Mm -hmm. Now you're right though. You're right? 100 mm -hmm. right. But in that itself is another area. I'm, my man was traumatizing me or with the, the same. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, said he you. said he bringing me a PTSD back. Listen, <laughs> oh my god. I've I, I seen a whole bunch of flashbacks with those ones. PTSD be a real one. A lot yeah. of people looked at. Yeah. Some of us grew up seeing people get shot, killed right in front of us. Can't You just go back to school like it's just how it's supposed to be. It's not how it's supposed to be. Yeah. No. You know? And now we use our women as some way to self-administrate the medicine. There's no medicine. It's just more poison. Now we're infecting not only ourselves, we're infecting our better halves, right? Causing them to act all kinds of crazy. And then we're going to turn around and blame it on, 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 on all kinds of other things that it doesn't have anything to relate with at this point. At this point, what's going to solve the problem is acknowledging the problem, one. Two, embracing the resolve Meaning you're going to be that bitch ass nigga and admit that what happened to you hurt you. Mm -hmm. Admit that you pacify that hurt with promiscuous activities, violent activities, right? Um, verbal abuse, substance abuse, mental abuse across the board. Yep. You just have to become accountable. Mm. And that's and that you know that in being that's the that's the true magic. Whether you know as a black man, you have to become accountable to overcome the problems. So that's my take on that. Damn. That the thoughts right there. Yo, y'all, ki y'all killing me right now. The more y'all talk, the more questions I got. Um, <laughs> and I, it's like honestly, the questions that I came up with kind of self reflecting. It's it's things that I think about myself as well. So. Um, so I I want to ask you guys. Okay, so for me personally, not to not to I mean I'm the host, so I guess I am taking over the show. But for me personally, right? Um, what can I say? I, I'll give you guys an example. Not not to say that I'm trying to throw my dad under the bus or anything like that, but it is what it is. Um, because it's gonna go to 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 one of my questions, right? So when I was younger, I went to my boy's house. I was chilling. It was late. I came home after school. I went to after school program, went to my boy's house. We chilling, watching TV. I came home. Okay. It was late by the time I got home. My dad looked at me and said, yo, um, you know, I saw that you came late. So if you ever need a ride and it's late and you don't see a bus or whatever, let me know. And this, and this is no ill, Ill will towards my dad or nothing like that. It's just... It's, it's my story. It's what happened, right? So I called. I get to Forest Hills. Did I have a cell phone at that time? I, I either... No, I used the pay phone, right? I put the pay... I, yo, I have this internal battle with myself where I know I'm supposed to do something or not do something, and my subconscious tells me, bro, you're wasting your time. Don't even do it. And I say, yes, I, nah, I'm going to do it anyway. I, I, this is the right idea. Put the money in the pay phone. I call him. I call that. Bro, house. you got to explain to the young listeners what's a payphone. <laughs> Yo, I, I thought about it as I said it. So payphone is something that you used to put money in and be able to use for for 25 cents. And you you had X amount of minutes to talk to someone. Now you have a cell phone. There's Wi-Fi towers everywhere. They 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 trying to get your information any way possible. Payphone, they couldn't get jack nothing from you. And there was no apps on it. Just phone calls and you keep it moving. No pictures, no nothing. But I called him and I said, yo, how, how you doing? He said, good. I, I, and then um, I don't know why he passed my mom the phone. Passed my mom the phone. She said she's doing good too. We talked. Passed him back the phone. And I said, yo, um, you think you can come get me from Forest Hills? There's no bus. He goes, there's no bus? I said, well, I mean, that's what I said. I said, yeah, there's no bus. He said, you sure? I'm like, Maybe he got cameras on me. He can see he can see something I can't see. I said, No, there's no bus. You think you can come get me? 
And this man said on the phone, nah, I'm I'm in bed. If if you really can't come home, uh then you know, then you could come. I said, Oh yeah, there's a bus right here. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hung up the phone. There was no bus. So I walked from Forest Hills all the way to the crib. And in between, um, I forgot the project, but at the time that project was really dangerous in the in the Rosendale High Park area. Like they they was beefing and stabbing each other. You talking um, about Beach Street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, damn. I really got to walk from Forest Hills there. I said, how long? How, how, yo, just having this internal battle. But I, I, at the end of the day, I said, yo, you went out. You was chilling. You already knew he wasn't going to come get you. And you need to get home or you're going to get an ass whooping if you don't get home. So what you about to do? I said, yo, I guess we got to walk. So I walked all the way down. Had you know, I was having self talks. I was reflecting. I was like, "Oh, whatever, blah 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 blah." And I get home, and my man said, "Yo, so how was the bus ride?" And I was just like, "It was good. I'll see you tomorrow." And I kept it moving. But in that moment, I think subconsciously, I was I was suddenly building myself to the question I'm about to ask you guys: Do you think some of these mental health issues and trauma that you face? have made you stronger. You know what I mean? I felt like he wasn't, I don't feel like he was abusive or nothing like that, but I do feel some of the things that he wasn't emotionally available for me for that I should have probably got when I was younger, that it actually made me stronger because it made me realize that's not what I want to do. I, I'm going to yeah. use this to power me to be better. You know what I mean? And and I don't, I know, listen, I know a lot of people they got beef with their families. They hold that trauma to heart and all of that. I don't hold, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's what I learned from my mom. Maybe it is religion. I don't know what it is. I don't hold, I don't hold none of that against them. I see it as, yo, listen, he was teaching me a lesson without teaching me a lesson. I, I got to look out for myself and I got to get, if if I'm going to put myself in this situation, I got to take care of it. You know, I, 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 I got to better myself. I, def I definitely agree with you. I don't, I don't see it. I feel as though, me personally, speaking for Kevin Beatle, <laughs> and piggybacking off what you just said, I feel as though some of those stuff did make us stronger. It made us figure out things. We battled adversity and came back. And so, like, now as adults, we don't see the problem. We look for the solution. Whereas nowadays, more people see the problem than mm -hmm. the solution, and they're looking for somebody else to give them the solution. We didn't have that luxury. Because, like you said, you know, I was doing what I was supposed to be doing in the first place, so I better figure this out. Like, you know how many times I went out, snuck out, the, and I'm calling, I'm hitting up my sister like, yo, make sure you keep that porch door unlocked. <laughs> and if I see that porch door locked, I know I'm fucked. Mm -hmm. But, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, I got to figure out something to get into this house. And I know, like, damn, I might have to sit in this stairwell till she getting ready to go to work. And I'll catch that asshole when, when she come back from work. Right now, she tight. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it, it showed you, like, I mean, that's, that's some examples. But it's like, we were taught early on, we ain't always going to win. We ain't always going to get what we want. We ain't always going to be at the right place at the right time. You just got to figure it the fuck out. Nowadays, I think if you drop some of our... And and this is no no not I mean obviously we're a bunch of successful black men in America so our kids get the lots of luxuries that we didn't have and that's a form of trauma in itself we kind of overcompensate but at the same time I don't care I'm I'm not living in the hood no more <laughs> I, I took my family to the burbs and we we raising suburb children now and life is different for them they don't understand the word no so now we have to instill new things in them but without creating trauma for them at the same time. Like we have a weird balance that we got to figure out in nowadays. Cause it's like, whew, these suburb kids, boy, if we drop them in the hood, they ain't gonna know what to do, but there's really no hoods no more anyway. It's all gentrified That's and true. it's called housing, housing areas housing now, development. Now, housing developments. <laughs> and you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, it's for the better, I guess. But I, I think it made us better. I'm not gonna lie. I love my Haitian background. Now, I don't believe in a lot of the stuff that they did, but it made me who I am today. I ain't taking shit, and I'm going to figure it out. 
Like there's not there's not nothing in this world that's gonna happen that I can't figure it out. Yeah. People be asking me all people ask me sometimes like, yo, how do yo this da da da? Okay, I'll figure it out. Because ain't nothing that's else it. I can do. Like yeah. that's all I can. I'm gonna keep going until it slaps me in the face again. And then when that slaps me in the face, I'm figure out maybe I should have ducked. It. Maybe I should have ducked instead of dodge. All right, let's let's try this again. You know what I mean? But that's because of our upbringing. Like. And plus, our parents didn't have time for that. I came from a single parent household. My mother was working two jobs. Mm-hmm. She ain't got time to be coddling me and all that shit. Like, figure it out. I mean, look, look at you now. You figure it out. You going to therapy. You realize something's wrong. You doing what you got to do. Um, the other reason even, why I even that- even with even with therapy though, just think about it. We had to become successful and open our eyes. Oh, therapy that, ain't cheap. Yeah. Perfectly cheap. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And all insurance don't cover it. And then the ones that they do cover, it's like it's like getting a public defender than that that high price lawyer. Give me the high price right. lawyer because I need I need to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. No knock to my public defenders. Uh, that was still great. I love what y'all do. I had a great public defender one time in my life. Well, they definitely did a good job. You here with us now, but I, hey, I think it's brother. definitely important. Um, like you said. Find a balance on how to give our children hard times so they can figure things out. Um, I thought about it the other day. I think it's important to, what's really important is let your kids know that in the moment, you might not help them, but you're there for them. You know what I mean? So you stubbed your toe. Okay, cool. Daddy, can you can you do this? No, 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 no. You stubbed your toe. What you about to do about that? What what are you gonna do? I, I don't know what to do. No, no, no. You do know what to do. Just think. Take the time. Think about it. I'm gonna be here for you, but think about it. And I think the other thing that's important when it comes to mental health in our kids, and if we are gonna give them tough time, yo, it's important to encourage our kids. You know, I give both my parents that they definitely um they they were very encouraging. And I think that's why I didn't really take some of the things that um, uh, that probably should have took as oh my god, they emotionally were not there for me. Is there was a lot of positivity, you know what I mean? Like I when they bought when they bought their first house in America, yo, it was like as if they won the Super Bowl or they just won the NBA championship. They just won Wimbledon. They they just went to the they went to Mars and made it back to Earth. You know what I mean? And and that right there, every time. Anything negative would happen. That's what I would always go back to. Like, damn, they bought a house in America. You know, when you learn, when you learn about U.S. history and what what, what happened to our people, like J, like JC said about, you know, lack of resources, lack of being able to buy a home. You know, recently they just, um, I saw a video that. You know, they talked about Central Park in New York. Basically, there was a black town there and how they played the black people there so they can build Central Park. They told them they didn't own the land that they own. So they played them, you know what I mean? And got them got them out of there. So I'm looking at so my, many stories like that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Okay. So, so I'm looking at my parents and I don't know, maybe it was too much of a positivity. Maybe that's, that's part of mental health too. It's too positive. I don't know, but... <laughs> I just saw it as, yo, it's just so amazing. And I think that's something that we got to try to give our kids. Like, yo, it, it, it's okay to have a tough time, make them yeah. strong, but not be abusive within making them strong. You I know, feel like these oh, people got grit. Yeah, and you know. They don't have that, what we what we had, like, at yeah. all. I got, there's, I got five of them. And, I mean, we're, we're, a, we're a blended family, but my favorite word is no. <laughs> no that we got we got a 26 soon to be 24 18 and two soon to be 15 year olds and the 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 oldest boy he's i he you know he thinks i'm hard on him but i'm like Only you knew. can't you, you i want you to have some idea of like you said trying to use your brain and figure stuff out it's it's not i mean i didn't have anything handed to me i it you know at all but like so i want that type of grit 
instilled mm-hmm. in kids that it's not going to be handed to you. I'm going to be here. We're going to have all the conversations, feel all the feels, cry all the cries, or whatever emotional things you're going through. I'm going to talk it through with you because even though I was exposed to what mental health was at a young age, it's not like those conversations were being had with me and my parents, like at all. We, we didn't have them touching the conversation. too open. How open I, enough. It was... It, it was like to a point, but it was just like, you know, and it's now it's like anything that, you know, our kids are going through. I'm like, oh, we're going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know, what whatever it is, like what happened? What happened today? What, what happened in your day today? Just tell me what's going on with you. Um, you know, having those conversations and trying not to be it's really easy to get caught up in that work. And we got to just get through and mm-hmm. get to dinner. You know, it, it it's like you wake up, you got to get through the day. What are we doing for dinner? You know, and they they got stuff going on in their lives. And it's just like, if you don't check in with them, um, you can miss stuff that's going on with them really, really easily. Uh, and just having those conversations as often as you can. But, you know, yep. just if you don't create the safe space and if you don't initiate the conversation, it may not happen with them and they're not going to know how to initiate those conversations or navigate those feelings when they get to be adults themselves. It's hard enough for them to navigate just high school. That's like, it's like another planet. So, you know, and, and they're fresh into having all these emotions and feelings and having no idea whatsoever how to navigate that world and, you know, especially the boys of Man. you know, the it, girls, the guys, the, the drugs, yeah, it's, the sex, like, the yeah, the, the if, if, food, if I can, <laughs> yeah, everything, man. Like Jason all, the, said. all that stuff. Yeah, yes. you gotta have um, just I think it's just having having the conversations now. I think like the, that's probably the difference between our parents' generation, and our generation, is that we're actually having the conversation. I think I think that's the best thing you said because like. Power to you for being able to say no. My nose a weak as shit. Yeah. Like, like my nose. Just, be like, just don't care. Just, just. Be I'm like, not gonna lie, like, Kev. No, you look like the type. I like no, and then it'll be like, like even my girl right now, she always be like, "Yo, you, you gave him so easily." Like, what happened? <laughs> what, happened what happened? to ten minutes? I be like, "Yo, he already did three. He understood that he did something no. wrong." Like here. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I I think it goes back to what we what this whole thing's about. Like, I heard no a lot. My child don't have to live that life. Like he, there's certain things you're gonna get a no for. That way, well, you know, when I do say no, I mean that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like, some things just like, all right, whatever, dude. Just take the extra five minutes. Mm-hmm. It ain't gonna kill nobody. Um, jumping in real quick. So. You know, I, as we talk, I take notes. So if you see me looking down, you're like, okay. we're doing the same. I feel you. I mean the pen, so I figured yeah. you. Was just- yeah. <laughs> um, you know, something that I, I jotted down in this recent exchange is um, you mentioned, you know, it makes you stronger, and I I find that a very interesting statement that we think. Things that hurt us make us stronger. Got to be very careful with how we embrace that doctrine. Hardships can make you resilient. But then you sometimes have hardships that need that need some explaining. Right, that needs some closure. Um, not all hardships make you strong. As a matter of fact, if we're going to sit here and reflect, those same hardships that we're talking about that made us strong gave us the same inconsistencies mm-hmm. that we're going to therapy for right now. You right? Right. so I got what, I got a question for you. Yeah, when you say when you say closure, right? I always have this thing with people when they say, I need closure, I need closure. What what is what is closure? Like I even asked a therapist this and she couldn't even explain it to me right. Like what 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 is closure? So let me ask you this question. 
we can make this feeling based, right? Um, mm -hmm. So when you when you look in the closet, so something you could probably relate to. When you look in the closet, mm -hmm. I ain't fitting away. None of these kicks, none of these shits gonna work with this outfit. And mm -hmm. you take stuff out of your house, you go, you find the perfect pair, and you cop them, right? Mm -hmm. the that you had of not having that particular item in your closet is now superseded by this feeling of accomplishment and contentment that you have now attained this item that you need, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, closure works in a similar capacity. Okay. I don't have this thing at the moment, but now I definitively do. I fully understand the why, the how, the what. And I can now navigate this situation with knowledge and not just emotional response. Mm -hmm. Logic, right? Um, in, in, in some instances for myself, I've dealt a lot with closure. And in one specific area out of many, closure came to me um, and I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to let all of this shit out. I don't want to sit here and just run through all my problems. Y'all be like, yo, you real fucked up, bro. <laughs> you should go, go to the hospital now. Nigga, don't be here. But Nah, express you know, yourself. And Kev, I think this would grant, grant some better insight for you. All right. So as a youth, I came up with um, definitive trauma from sexual abuse as a child right which had made me even for me to say this to you right now it took time for me to work up to be able to even say it out loud mm -hmm. um i had to come to terms with the fact that i was a child i wasn't protected right i was a child i wasn't even um nobody spoke to me mm. nobody nurtured me right i had to go through life exhibiting certain trauma induced reactions to things not knowing or remembering because your mind will block things out not knowing why i'm doing it okay fast forward i come you know to my supposed adulthood right because we think we're the man now <laughs> not really a man yet um and I am acting out in promiscuous ways, right? I have woman on top of woman on top of woman on top of woman, and it's insatiable. There's no end to it. I can't find what I'm looking for, but I'm taking things from these women. I, I've, I've hurt more women than I care to remember, bro, for lack of understanding myself, for lack of closure around the things that were making me act the way I was. I, I was taken from these women that which I thought was taken from me. That's shit. Indeed. Um, not until later did I realize that I had to A, address the problem, B, vocalize it, internalize it, express it, embrace it, then nurture it. So that I can have a stable state of being when dealing with that problem. Mm -hmm. Even now, even now, as I am have my closure, bruh, you can't be a man and stand too close to me though. It just trigger. And I, at least I can catch it. You know what I'm saying? Um, certain phrases can't fly by me. I get I don't like people touching my children any kind of way. As you can see, it's still, still malignant. It's, it's just mm -hmm. in there, right? But if I didn't take the time to really turn around and say, hey, you know, I'm looking at the back of an image of a person that I want to be. How do I step into those shoes? How do I get there? How do I catch up to this person I see that I could be? And a lot of it comes from, you know, addressing the problems logically. So when I, just to bring it full circle, when we talk about, things making you stronger yeah 
it made me stronger to a degree, but the emotional closure, not so much. So I became stronger in certain areas, but I I was lacking in the emotional dispositions. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, so just, so there's know. levels. So exactly. so I have I have a, I have a question. For you. I have a question for the group. Sorry, Renan, I ain't trying to take over. Another no, question. you know what? Listen, I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm three for three. Um, <clears throat> I'm three for three today with um thinking things in my mind, and then it actually happened. So that's what I was gonna open up the floor to you guys to ask questions as well, because I think it's important. We trying to talk. We trying to learn from each other, and we trying to give people um the tools that we have mm-hmm. in our experience and in which we want to give them. So go ahead, man. What's your so, question? So. So when we when we speak speaking on closure, right? I feel as though once you acknowledge a certain situation and you could be at peace with it, because like speaking for me, right? Let's put myself out there, myself in these shoes. I was bullied coming up, bullied to the point where I stopped going to school, had to repeat the ninth grade, change schools, all that good jazz. You know what I mean? But then I became the man. Fuck y'all, bullies, y'all still ain't shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> some of y'all worked for me at some point too, bitch. But anyways. That's trauma oh, talking. She's right gonna there. have she's gonna have that's, a that's time trauma. editing this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but like I look at it like this. I don't need closures for them fucking losers. I acknowledge with myself, like, there was nothing wrong with me. It took a while to realize that shit. I just didn't grow into myself yet. I didn't have the confidence yet. And clearly they didn't either. So because they had to prop themselves up on somebody else. So me going to try to get closure from them it's like fuck you bro like i figured out me i grew into me you still trying to find yourself right